Sales is the most lucrative skill in the world, period. The problem is most sales advice out there today is outdated, cheesy, and can even keep you from getting the deals that can make all the difference in your career. This is the No BS Sales School, a podcast for entrepreneurs and salespeople who want to master the skill of selling without all the BS. Welcome to the No BS Sales School podcast. I'm your host, Walker McKay. Today, I want to talk about five ways that your ego is hurting your performance in sales. Five ways your ego is hurting your performance in sales. I must admit, this is something that I struggle with. And so I'm going to talk about um, how maybe it's impacting you and how it's certainly impacting me. Let's talk about what ego means. I looked up a definition of that. Um, and it says, ego is an unhealthy belief in your own self-importance. Um, it means that you have this um, need to be better than everybody else. And it means you have a desire for recognition, right? You need that recognition. So here's how I want you to look at ego in a way, because that's a word that's tossed around a lot. A lot of people say healthy ego is good. Let's talk about ego versus confidence, right? Ego is weak, right? Ego is looking for all the external things. Confidence is a calm belief that you're going to be okay, that you got this, that you got this figured out, right? Confidence is open to new ideas. Ego is very challenged by new ideas. So let's talk about the five ways that your ego is hurting you in sales. Number one, your ego blinds us to our own flaws. We don't see our own flaws. We would pretend they don't exist. And instead of admitting our flaws, we blame somebody else or external forces. We make excuses. Oh, it couldn't possibly be my fault. It's the economy. It's the company. It's that asshole that works at the company, right? It's our prices are too high, right? It's my shitty territory. See, your ego doesn't want to believe that you actually are the problem because then you'd have to make changes and changes are scary. Ego don't like changes. Ego likes just the way it is. Do you ever make excuses? Are there things? And here's the thing. What I want you to do is ask the people around you, what excuses am I making? Hear me out. Listen to me because oftentimes we say them so often we don't even recognize them as excuses anymore. And maybe the people around you are saying the same things. So give the people around you permission to call you out on your excuses. You've heard me say this before. If you can change, I can't, it won't, they'll never. It's because. Say, I haven't figured out how to instead. I hadn't figured out how to sell in this new economy. Hadn't figured out how to get that guy to call me back. Hadn't figured out to get higher margins on what we're selling. Hadn't figured out how to make a million dollars this business yet. Right? Own it. Your ego says, no, 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 not your fault. Build your confidence. Take responsibility. Remember, the second thing your ego will do to hurt you is it makes you complacent. It makes you want to not reach anymore because reaching is scary. Reaching means you could fail. If you set higher goals, you could fail, right? And your ego doesn't want to fail because failure bad. Confidence says, I'm going to fail. I'm going to fail often and a lot, and I'm going to learn from it. But your ego, and I'll, I'll give you an example. Maybe you're looking right now at your pipeline. I talked to a guy this morning. He's got 50 legit deals in his pipeline. I said, you know where you're going to fuck this up? He said, where? And I said, you're going to think that, gosh, if I close a third of these, I'll be made. And I said, and so then you'll think I'm too busy to look for more stuff. And then I promise all the ones you want to close won't close or they'll push out. So what I want you to think about is don't look at the speedometer. Don't count your 50 deals. I want you to notice how hard you're pressing the gas pedal because your ego would say, you're doing enough. You don't need to do any more. For God's sake, you got 50 deals in the pipeline. You don't need any more. You don't need to work that hard. Now's the time for you to harvest, not to plant. Bullshit. It's always the time to plant. It's always the time. 
right? Your ego will say you've done enough. You don't need to make any more calls today. Your ego will say, take Friday off. Hell, go to the movies. Go drink a beer at lunch. Your confidence says, no, 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 no. I got this. I'm going back to work. All right, how about this? Number three, your ego will encourage you, will help you encourage you to make bad decisions. How does this work in sales? Well, I keep thinking, think about this idea. Ever heard of happy years before, right? Where you have, you're as a sales guy, you don't want to hear the bad shit. All you're hearing is what you want to hear. All you hear is the good stuff and there are red flags everywhere but you don't see them because all you, your ego says, I earned this one. This deal is mine. These people are supposed to buy from me. There's no way I could screw this thing up, which is always the death of a deal. There's no way I could screw this thing up. There's always a way you could screw this thing up. Encourage you to do shit you shouldn't do. You need to see things for their reality. Your ego will blind reality for you. Make you believe, no, 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 that could never happen to me. Bullshit. Confidence is I'm going to take steps. I'm going to listen for advice. I'm going to be wide open. And you know, if this is a no, it's okay with me because no's happen. Maybe I'd rather have a yes, but no's my second favorite word. I'd rather hear it in the first meeting or the second meeting instead of the sixth meeting or the sixth month of working on this damn deal. Number four is your ego will make you de defensive right? Where you get knocked back. And this happens oftentimes with, um, think about people give you objections. Hey, listen, your price is too high. And so we think it is not, we get emotional, right? Or we have, or let's say, um, somebody says, well, um, you know, when can you, or you guys can't do this, Right. Or, hey, this isn't going to work because of X, Y, Z. And all of a sudden your brain gets clouded. You see freaking red. Right. Totally emotional, totally reacting. We're involved, personally involved. That's one of the things that can kill you in sales is being emotionally involved in a sale. You know, who's supposed to be emotionally involved. Your prospect. If they're not emotionally involved, you don't have a sale. The converse of that is if you are emotionally involved, you probably ain't going to have a sale either because you're not hearing anything. Right? Your ego makes you defensive. If you hear something that you don't want to hear, it pisses you off and you go on the defensive. And y'all know this. Whenever you get in a, whenever you get in a conversation or a debate, if you ever get defensive or emotional, you're going to lose. If you ever wonder if that's true or not, you can come watch my house in the evening. And sometimes we get in conversations where I get defensive and automatically I turn into a jackass. It's ridiculous. It happens over and over and over again. I know it's going to happen and I need to figure out a way to stop doing that. A fifth way that your ego can get in the way of sales is it stops you from making a true connection with other people. Why? Because the world's always about you. Your strong ego says, I need to explain to other people how important I am. I need to tell them how good I am, how good my product is, why I've been doing this. And they need to understand. Right? And you know what? That is boring. Because nobody gives a shit. Right? The way this can show is sometimes if you're a topper, Right. Somebody says, I did a million dollars and you say, I did a million, too. Or they caught a five pound bass and you caught a 10 pound bass. Right. Whatever. You've always done something better. That's ego. That's weakness coming out because confidence is you ain't got to prove nothing to nobody. Confidence is I like to learn more about you to see what's going on with you. Confidence is I don't need to prove myself to anybody. I already know I got it. Let's see if you got it. And I'm going to be confident enough to spend some time to figure out, is this the right move for me? Is this, a, is this prospect, are they going to be a good one for me to spend time with? Right? I already know that I, what I have works. Do they need what I have? Do they want what I have? Are they committed to have what I Are they committed to doing something different? Do they have a budget? What's their decision-making process? I can be confident 
right? Ask those questions. And I'm trying to connect, right? That's my whole point is to connect with other people. You can't do that if you make the world all about yourself, which is what somebody with a high ego, an unhealthy ego must do. So five things. Number one, they make us blind to our own flaws where we make excuses. Number two, it makes us complacent where we make excuses about why, you know, where we say, oh, I've done enough. I don't need to do anymore. Or we make bad decisions where we keep chasing deals because there's no way in the world this would go wrong. And you avoid every single bit of truth that's coming your way. Number four, it makes you defensive, right? You can't handle criticism. You can't handle coaching. You can't even handle it when somebody tells you things aren't going well. And the last one is it prevents you from connecting with other people because you're such a jackass. You think the whole world's about you. Don't be that guy. Work on your confidence, not your ego. Help your kids with their confidence, not their ego. Do me a favor, please. If you like this podcast, share it with somebody else that needs to know it. It needs to hear this message. Also, I got some free shit. Um, I've got a mini course I'm giving away for free at seven sales mistakes that many B2B salespeople are making and what you can do about it. You can find this at seven salesmistakes.com. It's the number seven salesmistakes.com. Go there, get that free mini course, see what you can learn. Let me know what you've learned from it. Love to have a conversation with you. Do you want to talk to me about sales? Walker at walkermckay.com. Send me a quick email. Happy to have a conversation with you. Look forward to talking to you. Thanks. Thanks for listening to the OBS Sales School podcast. If you haven't already, please take one minute to write a quick review for the show. It really does make a huge difference. Also, subscribe to the show and please forward this episode to somebody else who needs to hear it. As a bonus for listening, I'm going to give you access to a free mini course, Seven Expensive Sales Mistakes You're Making, and What You Can Do About It. Go to www.7salesmistakes.com and get access to the free mini course. That's the number seven, salesmistakes.com. Thanks again for listening to the OBS Sales School Podcast.